What if you could have a career where the opportunities are as vast as our nation, where it's not about mission statements, but a shared mission? At U.S. Customs and Border Protection, we go beyond to protect more than borders, from ship to shore, air to ground, cities to local communities. CBP agents and officers are keeping people safe. Join U.S. Customs and Border Protection and go beyond for something far greater than yourself. Learn more at cbp.gov careers. Every day, we rise, challenging ourselves to work for what we believe in. At U.S. Border Patrol, protecting our borders is more than a job. It's a calling. Agents answer the call, working together to keep our country and communities safe. If you are ready for a new mission, join U.S. Border Patrol and go beyond. Learn more at cbp.gov careers. Are you ready, kids? Get your parents' permission, check your mailbox, and grab your shopping cart. It's time for the Adventures in Collecting podcast. I'm Eric. And I'm Dave. Welcome, Welcome to, to Adventures, Adventures in, in Collecting. Collecting where we talk toy news, culture, and hauls, along with our journeys as collectors. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Adventures in Collecting. Hi. Dave, uh, we, we're, we're back. We're here. We are. Um, hope, hope everyone enjoyed the uh, Premium Toyetic event last oh. week. Yeah, that's been a lot of fun. I hope if, I, I hope uh, I hope everyone's enjoying our new little kind of like sub episode. This uh, this exploration of the the toyetic nature of professional wrestling events. Um, yeah, of professional yeah, been, wrestling attire. Attire. Yeah, yeah. Who who is the most toyetic? Well, speaking of things that are toyetic, Dave, um, I sh- I should not bury the lead today, right? Like it's like not. A no, I, I don't think you ever should. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna do my best here with this impersonation, with my my little bit of a cold that I'm fighting. But fall in, maggots! Uh, returning to the pod good. this week on the heels of an action-packed live stream a couple weeks ago are our friends from Asbro's GI Joe team, uh, folks. Welcome back to the show, Emily, Lenny, and Tony. Welcome back, guys. Howdy! Hi. Hello. Now, nice as- to see you guys again. It's 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 always a pleasure to have you guys here. Yeah. And, and as people who have actually met and or m- possibly have been put in the Cobra Clutch by uh by by Sarge, how did I how did I do with my maggots? My, it was it was good. Uh, I thought he was here with us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, I looked away for a second. I was like, Sarge. They got Sarge to do the open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the budget, the budget's always increasing here. We're always, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's gone up over the years. So before before we jump into everything, you know, we always like to get a quick update on the collections. Uh, so Emily, Lenny, Tony, what is the uh, the thing you picked up most recently that's resonating with you for uh, for your collections? Uh, I can start. I mentioned while we were talking before the episode that I recently went to the Dartmouth Mall for the first time, which, if you aren't familiar with the area, is a fascinating mall. It's basically a hallway with stores on either side of it. Absolutely fascinating to me. Um, But uh, more importantly, there was a hot topic which allowed me to get the new plush Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man backpack uh, for me to wear on some Ghostbusters-related shenanigans uh, later this month, which I am quite excited for. I think I might be able to get my phone in it. It's enormous, but the pocket to actually put stuff in it is tiny. Perfectly impractical. Well, just like <laughs> Stay Puft Marshmallow Man himself. It's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> Flawless. Nicely done. <laughs> uh, I can go next. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, so I buy everything, as you guys probably can see. Everyone at home obviously can't because uh, this is all audio. Uh, but so I buy all everything. But I, I'm going to give a shout out to the little guys here. I just got this uh, muscular. Oh. Whoa. Which, if you haven't That's heard great. of them, they're incredible. They're kind of like a a nod to He Man, I would say. Uh, but um, super cool. They're on Big Bad Toy Store uh, from MF Gallery, but they're just these jacked up, super weird. Oh, Lenny's got one too. Tony bought uh, this for me. Their muscles have muscles. <laughs> their muscles have yeah. muscles. 
and those have <laughs> muscles too. Uh, muscle are, that's incredible. They're, they're super fun and ridiculous. I love how gross they are. They're sick. That's awesome. So Maybe. actually, Lenny, question. So I know that you describe details as like the greeble on things. Is it yeah. still greeble if it's on something that is like alive, like the Organic. detail on like that figure? Or is no, that I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that's the, inanimate the detail. Star Wars term. Yeah, it's a Star Wars term, and I think they use it for like vehicles. <laughs> I think that's just like gross. I don't know. I don't have. A, I don't have a good word for it, but I think it's just <laughs> it's just gross veins and sinew, it's viscera, it's sinew. viscera sinew. and sinew. Yeah, yeah, gross. viscera and sinew. Love um, it. We're off to a real strong start. <laughs> the figure I'm going to pull out is a uh, complete opposite of a muscleoid, but she's awesome. I always love Metal Slug as a kid. It's one of my favorite video games. Awesome. All right. Um, and uh, I got the Fio figure. I think that's how you say her name. Oh. But, uh, she's awesome. This is the oh, box cool. is up on my shelves right now. But um, I just loved the loadout. It was crazy. She came with all sorts of accessories, all sorts of updates for her accessories. She also had like a like there's a crate and inside the crate was, uh, was other accessories and there was foam in the crate. And the one thing about her that was so crazy to me was her glasses are pressed metal. Whoa, so cool. Let me see if I can, uh, here, I'll show you guys. With like that thin wall thickness and stuff. Yeah. Check this out. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I'm like, can we do thin? Can we do pressed metal? <laughs> I don't know if it'll come up with the camera. Oh, for you wow. Guys. Yeah, no, no, no. This is the weird head. I don't, I'm not really. Oh, gonna, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, both of the heads are really cool, but the, the expression on the head's a little strange. That head but, is wildly questionable. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think she's yawning. I think she's like sleeping in the game, if I remember is, correctly, or something like that. Is that what that face is? I we'll go with so. that. We'll go with sleepy. We're going to yeah, go with But, sleepy. anyways, but look at the metal. It's yeah. crazy. That is wild. Pretty awesome. Yeah, that's yeah, that amazing. Awesome. So I'm like, how am I going to away with that? If you um, like put your nail on it, does it warp at all? Or is it, does it, it would. hold the shape? It would. Yeah, uh -huh. it would. Definitely would. Um, but you could probably warp it back to quite, back into shape. But I just yeah. thought. An it looks great stuff. though. Yeah. I was just like, that's crazy looking. I mean, there's no lens, but I mean. But still. Got, she has metal glasses on. Yeah. It's awesome. that's crazy. Well, all three, three very, very fun, fun and very on brand picks for you guys. Like very like in your, your respective wheelhouses. I dig it. Dig it. No, no surprises. Yeah. No surprises. Very cool. So there was a, uh, there was a pulse live stream recently. Um, and I feel it's only fitting that we start off our GI Joe conversation, um, properly the same way you all do. So let's, uh, kick things off if it's okay with a name only reveal. Is there a name that uh, you'd be willing to share with our listeners? Boys? Um, yes. I think we yes. said it. The one that we, we, I think the one we settled on, we said it already. <laughs> Did, Did we? Did well, we? Well, try we, it. And then if Dave and Eric don't remember go, better than wow, we were. then it's, you know, they'll know. Then we can do a different one. <laughs> Lenny, you say it. Blowtorch. No, you, you guys have, you guys have not said that. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> What a reveal! Very, so very. Uh, that's yeah. it's super cool that that blowtorch is coming. I mean, we can uh, w w without without revealing too much later in the Q and A section. But you know, we don't. A favorite of mine from my childhood. Awesome. Uh, I love the attachable flamethrower. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. And he's got all of his bells and whistles. Um, we updated him a little bit. Nothing too crazy, but like just kind of like realizing some of his armor. If you guys recall, it had like those like kind of like circular medallions all over it. So like yep. kind of like leaning into it a little bit. Yeah. You know? It felt like very like gaugey, like lots yes. of gauges. Yes. Yes. So excited well, to bring them to the line. Very cool. Yeah. That, that That's one that too, you know, again, we, we don't get into like the, for the Q and a stuff. We, we avoid the questions that you guys are not going to be able to answer such as mm -hmm. when are you making blowtorch? But uh, that was yeah. a very popular question <laughs> submitted for the Q and A by lots of people. So soon, congratulations! <laughs> the, the one time your, we don't ask the question, that's the answer for it. Your, so, your question has been answered. <laughs> dreams, dreams. Wait, and do wishes people actually do come ask true. specifically for blowtorch? Yes, we had a lot yeah, of requests. Yeah, blowtorch is a staple. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's a staple. All right, good for and us. It wasn't just Dave writing in over and over again. Yeah, uh, no. it, it was not. It was not. It wasn't like when I was. It wasn't like when I was. Uh, 
<laughs> Although he would be, he would be, he would be a funny uh, character to have burner accounts for. Um, <laughs> I was just gonna say it wasn't like How that time you. I was creating burner accounts to keep uh, requesting shipwreck. That was <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. I mean, you. that worked out pretty well for you, though. It yeah, did. Man. It did. It worked out great. I'm looking at him right now. He's great. Um, speaking of the recent live stream, you guys had quite a bit to show off and, and put up for pre-order. Uh, seven, seven new items to be, to be exact. Uh, this question goes out to each of you. Uh, which was your favorite reveal uh, from, from the stream? Oh, mine was definitely the SMS slash HMS. Um, are we, oh, pre-orders or reveals? The old reveals are the ones no, that, that works. pre-order. No, that, that works, works too. That, yeah, you could totally yeah. take that. So we, we started the development on that item when we were developing the his tank. So for a, a brief, beautiful moment in time, the original his tank offering actually included the HMS. Um, but the price point on it was much higher to kind of accommodate for the extra plastic and all of the extra pieces. And so ultimately we made the decision to say, you know, we'd rather be able to have people get the HasLab for a lower price point so that they can troop build with it. Cause you know, it was our first classified HasLab offering and then do the HMS later as an add on so that if you want it, you can buy it. But if you don't want, if you buy five his tanks and you don't necessarily want five HMSs, you can buy however many you want. Um, so keeping that a secret for as long as we did, I think was, absolutely incredible on the work of the team i know i think in the fan stream lenny mentioned this but the original design of this was even bigger than this was like it the first time we saw it, i think we all kind of went oh my god that's so big <laughs> like it yeah, was you saying like 12 inch rockets like originally was that weren't you saying that the rockets were originally designed to be like a foot long each they were they were <laughs> no, it, was, it was so big. no joke it was it was at, so the original model used to sit in our old HasLab lab office and we would look at it and we'd just be like, there was a, a figure that was sitting next to it. I think it was profit director Destro because we needed somebody who had a bigger torso. Um, we just happened to have one sitting around. And so it, it, I always smiled whenever I looked at it because I was just like, oh my God, that thing is so huge. So I'm glad that we brought the size down a little bit to make it, you know, it's not that it's reasonably sized. It's still very large, but it's, you know. A little more reasonably I, sized. I would say it's it's like a if you were to take the rockets and put it in front of it, it's a full hoagie. If you food, not the lasagna. It's like a hoagie, man. Head. Look at this thing. Yeah, it's big. So I'm excited about it. And Italian I have a grinder. Grind hoagie. Uh, did you just grinder. say a, gr- a grinder? Hoagie. Uh, a hoagie. <laughs> Lenny's speaking our language. It's a hoagie. Uh, you mean a, a submarine <laughs> sandwich? Is that what we're a, saying? Oh you can a call sub. it a sub. You can call it a sub. I'll accept it. Can you call it a sub? <laughs> but, but can you call it a submarine sandwich? A sub. Oh, my mom would call it a submarine sandwich. A submarine sandwich. I packed you a submarine <laughs> sandwich for lunch, Lenny. It's fabulous. My mom would say everything's fabulous. A fabulous submarine sandwich. We got to pull out the middle. Everybody needs to know this. We make a good Yeah, you got to hoagie. Go. Gotta carve, gotta carve out. out the middle of the bread so you can get more meat in there. Got scoop this is like oh, a couple of now. Yeah. So carve out the middle. And on this ad- and on this edition of Adventures <laughs> in Eating, um, we're gonna talk about bread scooping. <laughs> That's also on brand for us, I feel. Yes. <laughs> so uh Lenny, Tony, what about you? What about you guys? What which which was your favorite? Oh, uh, you go first. All right, but I'm gonna say Naga Hide. So you better get ready. Say it. Uh, you <laughs> said it. You already said it. Yeah, there it is. All right. Naga hide. <laughs> uh, yeah, that figure is uh, deluxe to the max. It's got uh, the the hog has so much deco on it. And Lenny just let me keep putting more and more on it, which is amazing. I was like, are we <laughs> sure we can put this much on there? Um, it yeah, it's beautiful. Um and he was also one of my, I, I, I probably say this every time I talk about a G.I. Joe, but they are literally all my favorites. But I always like this guy, obviously being a wrestling fan. I like the uh, super jacked up dudes, hence the musculoid I just showed you earlier. <laughs> uh, but um, he was part of like the, the strong team. Shout out to our friend Chris that also had the strong team. But it was like Salvo, Naga Hyde, all like these like <laughs> crazy looking dudes. But um, yeah, he's, he's my favorite amongst 
all the others that we revealed, but I got to give Lenny a choice. I mean, on pork belly, we even got the, uh, we got like, if you ever looked at like, like uh, wild animals and they have like the tear duct and there's like the tear coming out of the right. We even got that deco on there. I saw the, that. There's, there's like there lights. Was- yeah, there's light oversprays on the nose and like uh, over the eyes. There's dark oversprays on the eyes. Then there's that tear duct thing that Lenny uh, told me to throw in there. there it's it's insane how I just started like, doing a, a, the, the side burns. When I was doing the, the spec sheet, I just started going. I was like, I want to make it look real. Yeah. And then my engineer was like, yeah, you're, you're fine. I was like, where am I right now? <laughs> and, and it's not like we took any off of Naga Hide, the figure itself either, or the monkey. Like they all just got yeah ridiculous I mean, on a deco, which was awesome. Yeah, it was super fun. I, I love when it works out like that because they look more real that way. And you were and you were pointing out too the 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 fur on Naga Hide's back, like when you were talking about like the ombre of like the leopard yeah. skin and everything. Like it really does. Yeah. And the, and the the pictures is that was that Matt or Corey that took those those pictures? That was those, Corey. Corey took those. Right. Yeah, beautiful beautiful photos. I mean, they brought out all he brought out all of those details and yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it was awesome. That was a good. That was a good shoot. So it's a hard one to pick, but I think Doc, just because he's a staple. Yeah. Um, his uh, stretcher came out awesome. Uh, he's got a lot of cool gear. Um, it was really fun to kind of get into the stuff he would have on him. I loved keeping the pill uh, jars on his helmet, which I thought was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was so that crazy was- that he had those back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was, um, I, Jinx is a very close second. Um, Torch is a very close second. <laughs> I love the whole wave. Uh, Torch's accessories are very important for us too, from an engineering standpoint, because we got them to a good place. Um, yeah, that those but, translucent uh, flame effects can be challenging. So there are some out there that are a little droopy. Yeah, we um, we went through a lot of. What I'm showing you right here is like the first round. Uh, we went through a lot of stages of color and, and durometer and all that sort of stuff. So uh, the wave is an important wave. Um, so, but I think Doc, just because Doc came out awesome, He's got a lot of stuff with him. It's cool. Plus the collapsible gurney or, or uh, yeah. the stretchers, uh, the stretchers, the stretcher, awesome. yeah, excuse me, yeah, amazing. Yeah, and the fact that he can he can hold all of it too. I mean, that that's been one of the thing the hallmarks of the you know of the line is like, can everybody carry their stuff like their loadout? Yeah, and, yeah. you know, he can he can do it, it all. It's the goal, uh, you know, not going to happen all the time because you know sometimes it's a little <laughs> and, and yeah, engineering. Uh, sometimes some <laughs> of those things are a little hard to do, but that's the goal. We're trying to get every figure to hold what they can. You know what I mean? So, uh, but sometimes it's like you know you gotta. You got to, you know, push and pull. Yeah. Well, Emily brought it up as part of her answer to the que- this question, but the uh, you know, we, we got our chance to see the HMS in hand and how it plays with the Hiss tank, and it's incredible. I can't wait to attach one to mine. Um, you guys oh my have God, been... I didn't answer part of this. I'm so sorry. I should no, have been. It's okay. You, you guys have been, um, you know, storytelling with this line and and, and – this is a great example of like paying that off, seeing that image of like the fire team and the HMS and like the, like that whole thing in front of you guys, like build out was, you know, it was fantastic. Um, and, and you talked a little bit about the, the development, but like, tell us a little bit more about the actual story elements of this. Like what, like what's going on in your minds to kind of bring these pieces together and, and, and tell a cohesive story with the His tank. The His tank was, so kind of so special to us and so exciting. You know, we did, we did the Sky Striker. It was, it was a lovely first HasLab in a product that in retrospect had absolutely no business being a HasLab. I truly, we have learned so much from kind of the, the HasLab process um, from when we did that project to now that I believe that if it is a product that you can buy on eBay in roughly the same kind of condition or, you know, roughly the same size, roughly the same product, that it is not a HasLab. And that is kind of a learning that I have gotten to over the course of the last couple of years. But for all intents and purposes, it was a delightful first HasLab campaign for us. And we are, we are incredibly proud of it. But we knew that we wanted to follow that up with something that was magical. And so it was, I mean, from the get-go, it was the His Tank. And it was, you know, we are going to knock this thing out of the park. It is going to be absolutely incredible. 
the development timeline on it was ludicrous in terms of toy development because you saw how close those campaigns were together. We're never doing that again. Um, but it was, there's always, Haslabs are really, really scary because when you do a pre-order product, like just a regular product in a line, it's going to come out and people may like it. They may not like it, but ultimately it's still going to come out, right? Haslabs are make or break. Like it, it can fail from the get go. It can be a, it is a, a very anxiety inducing thing. And we didn't really know how the his tank was going to hit. And it hit like, whoo, nobody could have predicted how well that project was going to go. And so I think that there was part of what we wanted to do was celebrate that success and celebrate the excitement around the his tank by really kind of building an ecosystem out around it to help you to tell more of that story, which is, you know, there's so many different characters and variants of characters in G.I. Joe that can work with different terrains and different themes that this was kind of a unique opportunity for us to say like, okay, we have a, a flagship item in this line, right? Like this is up and to date, like this is our flagship item for G.I. Joe Classified. How can we blow that out, but also kind of parse the story beats out around it so that people get to enjoy this and kind of keep adding to that story. Does that seem okay? Did I do that? Okay. Also, I don't want to like disparage the Sky Striker campaign. Like it was a beautiful campaign. It was great. But we have learned a lot about the world of Haslabs in the last three years, four years. Oh my God, was that three years ago? Two and a half so years ago? Uh, three years ago, yeah. So yeah, that's why it's like thinking back to the yeah. story. I'm like, I needed you to say the marketing stuff to remind me. <laughs> yeah. Was that, did I do a good job though? Like did that spark something? did an amazing you? job. I think it really, yeah. it really kind of sums up like we're always learning from yeah. our, our past products. And I think which that leads into the storytelling as where we wanted to come up with a, we wanted to do a quintessential vehicle for GI Joe. Um, a lot of the other vehicles in GI Joe, although very quintessential, like the vamp, uh, the Dragonfly, the Mobat, a lot of those vehicles, they are very G.I. Joe. However, they are based very real world. So for the first HasLab, we wanted to do something that was very ownable. I- by Iconic. The- iconic to G.I. Joe, and particularly Real American Hero, which classified draws troops from. So we went with the Hiss Tank. Also, it's funny that the Hiss Tank is one of the most iconic G.I. Joe vehicles, and it's a Cobra vehicle. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's kind of like our TIE fighter. Yeah. In yeah a weird exactly. way. Right? Exactly. So mm-hmm. it's like we want to do something when the, a fan would see it and immediately know, oh, that's a his tank. And there is nothing else in the market like it. Right. So it's like you are getting a quintessential his tank from us. Uh, and it kind of like helps tell the story on your classified shelf. Also, it had to be big. Right. It had to be something that had presence on the shelf. So we were going through a lot of stuff that we had that would fit within the price point, too, because we do cost studies to see what we can afford to give the people and for a fair price. And I think the his tank really fits that bill. Um, and it, I mean, again, like who doesn't remember Cobra commander yelling at Destro as they're all driving the his tanks in going into battle in that desert scene, all the dust behind them. Um, and this kind of like really resonates with what the GI Joe battle encompasses, but it's, what's also cool about it is it had a lot of iterations of it and it had a lot of like the SMS or HMS, as we're calling it now, how that connected to the back. So then there's line extension opportunity there. Because for me, the G.I. Joe line is very archetypal and utility based. So if we're going to make characters and figures, they should um, kind of complement each other, right? So if you're going to make a tank, how can you complement the tank? Can you give the tank a group that protects the tank? It starts. That's why G.I. Joe for me is like the coolest brand because it's like, world building you are making figures for a reason and whether or not the aesthetic is the the, the aesthetic the form follows function essentially on gi joe right and that, it, that's been since day one so so if you're a big lob you're gonna look like <laughs> you know what i mean so like it, it all kind of like forms follow function and the story then enhances it even further so i think that that's why the his tank was such a good choice for the first one and the dragonfly, I can't wait to people with the dragonfly. We learned so much from the his tank and put that into the dragonfly. And the story we're able to tell there with the, with all the unlocks with Wild Bill and everybody. Um, it again, we're, we're, we're it's the little details that kind of bring these Haslabs to life. Um, 
So again, I think the, the short of it is, can we world build <clears throat> off of the thing that we're going to offer in a big uh, bombastic way, like in a HasLab? Yeah. And, and then, I mean, before we, we kind of move away from the design aspect, one of the things that jumped out at me about the HMS was how you kind of have that ratcheting height, different differentiating yeah. toe from that. It's like future proofing, right? Like if you wanted to tow it to something yeah. else or, you know, if you're a customizer or like whatever it is, like there's like options and it's so utilitarian and like so perfectly, you know, Cobra and, you know, like it's, it's just a great little touch. So sh- shout out to that. Yeah. That that thank you and that joint's actually a Transformers joint. I forget what figure I was. I think it was Blitzwing okay. has those joints in his shoulders. And I remember working on that figure. And then when we were working on the SMS, I was like HMS. Sorry, uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, we did. But what if we do a black uh, Jeep like vehicle that might want to tow this someday? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> there are time. different heights. The Energon universe. <laughs> in, the, in the Energon universe, there are different heights. So I remember that joint from that Blitzwing figure, and uh, it worked perfectly for this too. You know, so, I mean, you learn, you learn from things, and I think uh, again, it's that back and forth, future proofing, engineering world building, as well as story and design world building that makes GI Joe so cool. Ain't nobody beat GI Joe. <laughs> Plus, in the like you guys are saying, <laughs> when we put it all together on that turntable and you have the fire team you have the hms you've got the his tank it just looks so incredible together and i, I guess i'll ask you guys and and your listeners of course would you want to see more of that world building for fire team you know I, i've seen some incredible customs already oh yeah um, matching some of those color schemes and building out that squad but um i know i would certainly love more more world building on top of that yeah i mean i mean just think about you know the kind of the, the history of G.I. Joe, right? All those sub teams and the importance yep. of like the different sub teams and, and everything. Um, so absolutely. I think, you know, for going further with the, uh, the fire team is definitely a good idea, especially or, for, you know, the, the people who backed the, the project. Or even if you just have everything like out together, you know, mm-hmm. you always back when it was the three and three quarter inch figures, you know, you had the ability to kind of have this like a um, massive, display of like oh look Mm. here's everything together and it looks like a world so just to kind of see that continue here is is awesome like you know i think there's always that potential for it Mm. or that need for it it is one of the things that's been important to us too is without without any kind of a caveat during the haslab campaign if we do add-ons that match themes they will be available to everyone. It won't be limited to HasLab backers unless it is something that is denoted during a HasLab campaign. That's yep. me future proofing something. We don't have that capacity <laughs> right now. But it is that's something that's important because we don't want so say the fire team came out, which nobody knew about during the actual his campaign, and we said, this is actually limited to only the people that shelled out for this very expensive item. And if you didn't buy that, not knowing that these figures were going to come out in the future, you can't have that. Because it's it's really important to us that our, that our fans and the people that are buying the product are having a good experience. And that would have been a, a terrible experience. Um, so it is, so we are... We try to the absolute best of our abilities to create products and kind of strategies for those products with fans in mind. We heard about it. Um, Lenny mentioned it a couple minutes ago. Um, from one HasLab to another, when can fans expect the next update on the Dragonfly? Uh, soon. I'm I'm behind. I apologize. It's on me. The Ghostbusters movie is coming out at the end of the month. And so that's kind of what is taking over my life right now. But we did get in prototypes. Uh, e- are they EP2s or EP1s? We are very far along. Uh, we're at EP2 and we're doing some on a HasLab on, especially you guys wouldn't know this, but on a vehicle that looks like it can fly, goes through different testing. Interesting. So that, yeah. So we got to drop okay. it. We got to drop the shit out of it. <laughs> oh my god! Be, yeah, you have to you have to beat it up. Uh, so basically, we're going through some testing. We've had no no problems really, but it goes through a little bit more rigor 
Um, and we're making sure, like, actually, I just saw the, um, the chain gun, uh, they, we just updated the attachment and we got a video today. I haven't gotten the updated model yet. So basically they sent me a video. We comment on what we can tentatively and like these comments don't really resonate until we get the model because we want to see everything in hand. Um, but the way that everything was snapping in and the snap from the video, you guys know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Put something uh-huh. like, it looked like it was magnetic the way it was going in. It's oh, not, nice. it's not. Nice. But like the, the the tolerance levels are really nice on it, so I'm super excited about it. Even the even the EP one that we have right now uh, is really good. So that the EP two is going to be good. And on a Haslab, we'll go deep into the EP. Like we might even get like an EP three. Um, sometimes you'll do an EP four on some items, but that's that means you're getting late. <laughs> you're getting really late. Yes. <laughs> so, so we don't have footage of the video of the Dragonfly models being dropped, but I did take pictures of Lenny doing model review. I think it was with Matt. Um, mm-hmm. And so when I uh, have a little bit more brain capacity, I will get those sent over to our Pulse marketing team and we will uh, get those out to fans so that everybody can see them. We didn't even fake pose, too. I think you came over while we were actually reviewing the model. Yes, no, you were actually reviewing the products. I showed up. I stuck (laughs) my camera in front of them. I took, like, 50 pictures from different angles. And then I said, bye, and I left. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so this is so, yeah, was, so unlike the paratroopers you didn't you didn't have to drop the the uh the dragonfly out the the, the factory window outside oh. <laughs> that is on, that's one of my favorite memories um i still get people who bring up that video and are just like i can't believe you did that and i was like yep we sure did we had a lot of fun on that campaign <laughs> that was so funny i remember when you went and did that that was <laughs> um things i'm probably not allowed to do again um but you know we had a good time. There were a lot of disclaimers on that video. <laughs> I was going to say, is the drop test more like fun or nerve wracking or? Oh, we don't do it here. It happens at uh, a lab actually in uh, over in, uh, in China. So oh, there's okay. like a particular amount of tests and rigor that products go through. The vamp actually went through a lot of drop testing too, surprisingly. Um, and then we, it's funny, you, you're at like uh, an engineering pilot stage. I won't say which one. Um, but then you learn that you have to make some adjustments to the thing that's already molded. <laughs> You're like, oh no! So then you got to do all these changes, uh, and it's amazing to me what our team uh, over in China can do. Like, it's like we can fix it. That's doable, and it's like they're like, yeah, no problem, we got it. And it's like what that team can do. And I think I don't think they get enough credit of how much good work they do over there. Uh, and how much uh, they're able to kind of make our dreams come reality. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, all, shout out to the uh, PDE team. Oh, for sure. We all have our counterparts. Uh, there's a, you know, PDE Lenny and a PDE uh, Tony and a probably a PDE Emily over there. Probably. Uh, I don't know if Do we, we have marketing. No, I don't know. I'm sure that there's, <laughs> there's got to be somebody over there that I could be BFFs with, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. they're, they're just as incredibly talented and focused on a lot. Uh, of the detail work and um, function. Uh, obviously, many in- our engineers here do a lot of that stuff in-house too, but it's always great to have a second, third, fourth set of eyes uh, watching all that stuff for us. Yeah, so, it's amazing the, the level of knowledge they have to take it through the production process. You know what I mean? So there's like things that like, you know, you're thinking of in a toy, the features it should have, the details it should have, but then it's like, how does that get molded? Um, what will that do to the mold itself? Will it come out of the mold? Uh, will it cause issues for the factory workers? Uh, like glue on action figures is a big deal for, yeah. for, for an assembly line, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, imagine having 70 people have to glue a little piece of glue onto an action figure that could make a mess, right? So it's like, there's a lot of stuff that gets taken in consideration that these guys do, that they, they do such a good job. And I think it kind of goes on, unsung um but man thank god for them you know so uh you know it's it's a, it takes a village or in the case of hasbro it takes a almost a city size group of people and now a word from our sponsors what if you could have a career where the opportunities are as vast as our nation where it's not about mission statements but a shared mission At U.S. Customs and Border Protection, we go beyond to protect more than borders. From ship to shore, air to ground, 
cities to local communities, CBP agents and officers are keeping people safe. Join U.S. Customs and Border Protection and go beyond for something far greater than yourself. Learn more at cbp.gov careers. This segment is brought to you by our friends at Chubsy Wubsy Toys. A traditional mom and pop toy store in Little Falls, New Jersey, Chubsy Wubsy Toys brings you the best new toys from the brands you love without the hassle of pounding the pavement searching for them at larger retail stores. Visit them in person at their brand new home at 101 Newark Pompton Turnpike Suite 1 in Little Falls, New Jersey, or online at chubzywubzy.com. That's C-H-U-B-Z-Z-Y-W-U-B-Z-Z-Y.com. And tell them Adventures in Collecting sent you. Pulling up to Mickey D's just for drinks? Oh yeah, that's me. Nothing extra, just perfection and a straw. Coming in hot for the coldest cups on the block. Because there are drinks. Then there are drinks from McDonald's. Mix things up with any size lemonade or sweet tea for $1.49. Perfect with our classic fries. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. And now back to the show. You, so you bring up you bring up an interesting point, um, and it's something that the you know that the Transformers team has gone into a couple times, and I think actually in the past, uh, like when we first had you on, we were talking about molds and like kind of sneaking other heads and things onto like molds with other you know with other uh, projects. But with with something like a, a Dragonfly or a Hiss tank, like is that do you have to factor in the same kind of like size? Mold? Like, is there like a standard size mold or is it like you, that you just make bigger molds and fit more on and like, yeah, it's, it's crazy. So action figure molds are a particular size. Um, we call them cavities, right? So it's like, and it's the, it's the mold cavity, but then like a vehicle cavity, just imagine a fuselage of the, of the sky striker, for instance, like that's all one solid piece. Yeah. So now imagine the metal that goes around that. Say you're making like a Ford, resin mold like you see on instagram sometimes mm-hmm. or like toy toy kit bashers do imagine the amount of that rubber that's around that form made of steel and a square not the shape of a cup and it's like for the sky striker <laughs> so it would be like you know probably like a foot by like a foot or maybe two feet by two feet oh my God. um so like it, it depends on what you're making right and it's like just the engineering it always it always fascinates me the engineering that goes into uh like mold i guess they call it molding science uh and plastic science and what it takes and what kind of plastics to make we're dorking out a little bit i'm dorking out a little nope. bit but like just to like yeah. yeah how to make the stuff do you use nylon for the for the elbows do you use the poly like what do you use so it doesn't break over time so it doesn't snap uh and a lot of the with the um weapon stuff when it was softer a lot of that was because if it snaps it makes a sharp edge and our toy is four plus so if it snaps, it makes a sharp edge because the durometer is too hard. Uh, you have a problem. So you have to design the, the, the weapons uh, so that if it does snap, then you won't have a sharp edge. So it's a lot that goes into the back and forth and all that sort of stuff that we kind of don't really talk about too much. But it is it's a lot that goes into that and uh, kind of like the parameters you got to fall within. Um, and it's, it's what makes the job fun for me, honestly, to tell you the truth. It's like the like nitty gritty getting into how you do the thing or make the thing. Um, so aside from drawing cool pictures of action figures, I mean, the science and being there for the ride with your engineering team is kind of fun. And, and Tony it's, from, from it's that, it's the point, most fun math and science. <laughs> it's the only fun math and science. Well, math, science is dope. Anyway. Toy, toy math. <laughs> and, and Tony, like in, in the process now, you know, with like the paints and like the colors and everything in that EP process, does like the digitization of things has that made that process a little bit easier, or are you still like pulling out Pantone books and you know making sure that the oh, yeah. colors are matching Pant- and Pantone talking about cool is, grays? Yeah, uh, Pantone book is always the Rosetta Stone. That's the uh, the the word key. <laughs> Look at Lenny's Pantone books. <laughs> nice uh, oh, swatches. <laughs> yeah, back in the the Swat. paint room. We used to do the paint room clap and we would, if anyone said something great, we would just kind of fan these things around. Um, but no, it's the, it's the, uh, it's the Rosetta stone between design, our paint department, uh, and then our partners in PDE. 
uh, and then the vendor. So it's super important to still have the Pantone books. Digital has been great just because, um, Hey, I got to learn a new skill set, which is great. Um, but, um, our partners adapted to it pretty quickly. Um, and you know, you're really kind of keeping some costs down by not generating, uh, full prototypes every time you make one figure and, um, you can use that figure for presentations instead. It's, it's a very smart move. Um, but key is the, the Pantone book. We'll, we'll never get away from that just because it, ha it, it, again, it's, it's that language that's always constant. Everyone's screens are different, especially if they're not calibrated or if you're on a Mac or if you're on a PC, um, we have special monitors that do have, uh, some incredible color balancing, um, and they actually are on a network that can sync. So it makes sure that everybody's monitors aren't, Oh wow. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, that rules. Sync. They're, yeah. It's ESO monitors. Um, uh, they're really incredible, but again, on the network. So, you know, someone on your team isn't slacking, it'll go in and like calibrate their screen for them. Um, but again, not of all our partners have invested in that technology. So it's, it, it's still uh, Pantone is best. Yeah. But then again, now you need the best lighting for that. So are you getting the D50 lighting? I don't know. You got to that D50 lighting. Well, you want to know something crazy? Uh, when I redid my office because of uh, colors and matching, I got these lights. Um, you know, oh, look people at that. listening won't be able to know. So you can change the see, I can see color your spectrum on it. Your Tony and I, changing. we go hard. Tony and I go hard when it comes. Like we, we won't use colors from a screen. Like we, well, we do the, you know, we do the digital uh, paint, but then we check our paint map. We check our Pantone books like crazy next to our figures as well. So it's like we and go we, hard. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's color checks. I mean, you know, your first shots, you're not going to get the best colors. Our factory is uh, really doing a great job. Um, yeah. showed them, but, um, the, you know, that first round is going to be a little bit off. Maybe there's not enough saturation in the reds or the greens mm -hmm. not looking maybe a little too blue instead of a little more yellow that we want. Um, and then you get to a second round and, you know, hopefully not a third round, but, uh, you can really fine tune these things and, uh, me and Lenny go to town <laughs> on these. <laughs> I feel bad for Matt. Our engineer's name is Matt. So they're bad. patient though. They're patient. It's, it's, uh, he's a very patient man. We should get him a. We should get him a plaque. Man of great wisdom and patience. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> we love you. <laughs> so, so we want we want these as perfect as we can. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, S sticking in the uh, in the world of of art uh, specifically, uh, when the newest pre orders went up, we got to look at some of the uh, the new packaging. And uh, the classified line has gone through some visual changes over the years. Um, but what led to the step away from from bringing in those artists to do the the one off card art for uh, for the, the the main line figures? There was so with kind of the the success and the widening of the line, shall we say? There's I think we can all admit you get a whole lot more classified figures now in a year than you did in previous years. <laughs> and so we had a we had a full team that was dedicated to managing that process. And ultimately, uh, they got kind of shuffled. And when our when there was some E1 things going on, they got shuffled with E1. And so kind of a new team came on to lead packaging. And so they decided that they wanted to go in a kind of a more cohesive direction. Um, and I mean, I think the packaging looks beautiful. Stacy and Julian are doing an incredible job. And I think the, the, oh, the, the wave that we just pre-ordered is the first of the new kind of modular packaging that's being rolled out. Um, and so the, the sizing is a tiny bit different than you're used to with the regular GI Joe window boxes. It's, it got a little bit complicated. So when we made the move to step away from plastic free packaging, so you'll remember that the GI Joe line look switched from our original window boxes to when we went to plastic free packaging. Yep. So for like black series and legends, they were able, when we decided to go back to window boxes, they went back to their old window boxes because they still had them and the die lines were the same. All the patterns were the same. Great. We didn't have that because we had switched line looks. So we didn't want to switch back to an old line look only to switch back to the new line look. So we're trying to keep it as um, minimally inconvenient as humanly possible for collectors. So there is a there are a couple of figures that came out with in what we have been referring to as the intermediary step box, where it's the old window box die line, but with the new line look on it. 
Um, and now we are going into the new kind of modular packaging where everything will match. We'll all be cohesive. It will look lovely on your shelf. Um, but so that is kind of a, a new process change for us. Uh, but a, a, a welcome one, I think, to get back into the world of window boxes. Very cool. Um, and, you know, yeah. with, with that, I think we're ready for some, some Q&A, guys. So, uh, oh, it's time. Dave, <laughs> Dave. Oh. <laughs> Dave. You're in for it now. Please, um, according, please according tell, to my list, it's time. It is time. Please <laughs> tell our listeners, uh, you know, how can they submit questions for these, these Q&A sections of our interviews? I would love to. Um, first off, thank you for, for listening. If you um, are listening on your favorite podcast location, do make sure you subscribe. Um, I'm told it helps with a algorithm and that um, you automatically get every episode delivered to you on a weekly basis. Now, um, if you follow on the social medias, then you, you're aware of this Q&A process. But if not, go to your Instagrams, go to your Twitters, go to your YouTubes. Um, specifically on Instagram, though, you'll see us at AIC underscore podcast. And uh, in the story, we're going to have a story that says like, hey, Tony, Lenny and Emily are coming on. Do you have any questions for them? And there'll be a little box that you can tap on and you type in your question. And then Eric or I get those questions sent to us and we read them and we put them in this next list that's coming up. And um, the folks on on that are guesting on the show that get the uh, guests for that week will answer. And um, yeah, I think I did it. Bravo. You did a great job. Nailed it. (laughs) It's the I perfect system. Every time I love every time I can't keep myself together when he does that. And it just it makes me it makes me cry. I'm laughing so hard. And if I'm if you if you're on YouTube, ridiculous. smash that that subscribe button and hit that bell. They oh my god, they made us say that when we were doing fan streams. There was like a three month period of time where they were where they were like, Emily, at the end of all the fan streams, you have to make sure to say like, share, and subscribe for more great news from Hasbro Pulse. I was like, but do I have to? <laughs> gotta smash that subscribe button. Gotta smash it. Oh. Yeah. Gotta smash gotta, it. Gotta hit that bell so you know. Um, when there's a new video. It's not gonna work. So so let's let's dive into the QA. Uh we've got a bunch to go through today. This is anytime you guys are on, the fans are always uh you know submitting questions. So uh shouts to everybody that submitted, shouts to everybody. Unfortunately, we can't get to everybody. So um Dave, do you wanna go with the first one? I, I would love to. Um, and these all look easy, so I, I won't be apologizing to anybody's username this time. Um, <laughs> at literally underscore action underscore figs on Instagram asks, now that the community has proven there's a hunger for larger classified pieces, has the team started to think about um, any more about how play sets might fit into the plan? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Great uh, answer. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> uh, you can elaborate a little bit. I mean, do you have to, though? I'm just I kidding. Think, please yes. go ahead and elaborate. <laughs> Don't say too much, but please elaborate. I think, I think, I think to give a little more uh, juice to the squeeze, um, you got to see what is viable, again, price point wise. What are people willing to spend for it? What figure that are they willing to swap out for it if that is so not in their budget to get everything? You gotta you gotta kind of like think about people's wallets. Um, and then what is something that can enhance the shelf, not eat the shelf? Mm. Right. So um, as we think about that stuff, I don't think we're gonna go full bore in and you're gonna get a pit, but um, we'll we're gonna think about like what would uh, be feasible. And not crazy, but still awesome. Very cool. Yeah, I like that. And enhance the shelf versus eat the shelf because you you kind of think of it, but it's that's like a really good way of describing it. Yeah, like yeah. make your life a little easier, kind of thing. Like you know, cause I know for me, even my, my stuff falls down all the time. So it's like, how do you do it where you can help that problem, or you can make the shelf look cooler? 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, one of my favorite things to, you know, in, in terms of play sets of recent time have been some of the things that the, the Vintage Collection has been putting out, like hallways, dioramas, mm-hmm. like pieces that are kind of like modular, but almost shell-like. So yeah, that way you can cool. kind of, you know, you can set up a little scene and it doesn't like destroy any, it actually takes up barely any space on your shelf, your existing shelf. It just kind of enhances it. Never really thought about mm-hmm. it that way. Mm-hmm. All right. That's a t-shirt too, by the way. <clears throat> that is. Enhance your shelf. G.I. Joe Classified Series. <laughs> Get that on. Mm-hmm. If, if Listen, if Ryan can have his Mints on Card shirt on HasroPulse.com, you guys can get your, your Enhance Your Shelf. <laughs> That's an order. It's just G.I. Joe Classified. It has nothing to do with the uh, play sets. It's just... Yeah. Enhance yeah. Your Shelf. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Yeah. G.I. Joe Classified. So make, it, make it cool. All right, so this this next question comes from this next question. I ha- I have one caveat. I had to heavily edit it, edit the uh, the verbiage used for our next question. Comes okay. from at Jersey Maniac on Instagram. Uh, the team announced last year that future waves would be five figures deep, but we're still seeing waves of four. What happened? Uh, that is a super solid question. Thank you for editing whatever the original, uh, verbiage of that was. Same and question, that, just lots of Fs. There were- <laughs> yep, nope. I, how I speak when I'm not in a, when I'm not at work or at a podcast. Yes. Nope, yes. I mean, we've, we've all gotten those messages. Um, so the reason why, uh, waves are now five instead of four, or four instead of five, so when we originally were doing five-figure waves, You'll remember that the Retro Cardback Collection was a Walmart exclusive, and the 60th anniversary figures did not exist in the line. So we had to reallocate some of the item count away from our kind of what we refer to as the mainline classified collection. So that's our classic, you know, standard box size, $24.99 kind of modernized figures. We had to allocate some of the item count away from those figures to supplement the retro card back and the 60th anniversary figures. So your trade-off for n- having four figure waves instead of five figure waves is now you get retro figures and 60th anniversary figures. And I actually feel like that was a pretty solid answer. Definitely. So th- yeah, yeah. Is yeah that- it's funny that makes that makes it all make so much more sense now from a because when we make our rollouts for the year, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm like seeing the spreadsheet in my head. I'm like, that totally lines up. Uh, right. Yep. Exactly. It's still a huge <laughs> amount of figures, mind you. Yes. It's still a, it's still a lot of figures. Yeah. It yeah. actually it's it's crazy Wait, sometimes from yeah. a, from a development standpoint too. Um, the four figures is is actually way easier than the, obviously than the five figures away because you're actually working on exclusives at the same time. You're working on retro cardbacks at the same time. So it does alleviate us a little bit too, which is great. So we can and we just spread the cheese out a little bit more throughout the year. And will it kind of stay that way? Go well. Obviously, once the 60th anniversary figures are kind of like you're past that uh, that program or that execution, is the plan to kind of stick with the four figure waves moving forward, or is you know is that, that is something that's kind such of such a solid question? Please ask us again in the future when our 2025 product line is locked and loaded. <laughs> Deal, <laughs> Dave, you're up. All right, at the mass device on Instagram asks, why are certain G.I. Joes not paired with their iconic weapons when those weapons already exist in the line? The Weather Dominator will answer that question. <laughs> Sorry. I think for the most part, we try to get as many accessory, iconic accessories with each other's, with their particular character or figure. Um, in some cases, there is um, usage, tooling usage, tools not done being processed so then we don't have it so it's in the line so it's nice it's nice that it's in the line i look at i look at the brand as a total whole so it's like you have the parts and pieces to give to said figure um so essentially um it's usage and when we can use the tool and we might have a character line up that somehow some way throughout production we do have to shuffle things and things get a little squirrely so we try our best for that not to happen but when you're working on I don't know if you can include the two packs working on close to 70 action figures a year. Things do happen. So sometimes things get a little shuffle, have to be planned like that, essentially. So sort of what happens. Next question comes from at Cincinnati Chama on Instagram. (laughs) 
Chama. 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 Uh, Wait, like like a like a New England Chama. I don't know why. I I I, I guess president. No, no. I had that's to go from now the, on. I had to go with the New England Chama. Yeah. Like yeah. That. I figured I would have done that first. Not- <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any chances you guys would consider selling packs of the Cobra slash Joe stands? Talk about yes. it all. So, yeah. So we talk about it a lot. We're trying to kind of figure out, you know, what makes sense from a world building standpoint for G.I. Joe? Where do we go next? And we know accessory packs. We know kind of the stands. We know there's a lot of people that have a lot of things that they're very excited about in the line. But for the time being, please feel free to check out our retro card back figures that come with delightful G.I. Joe and Cobra stands that you could use with your classified figures. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Dave, you're up. Fun fact. Fun fact. I uh, I had the chance to. Well, we don't have the. We're not supporting the selfie series anymore. But I got to design all the selfie series exclusive stands uh, for the San Diego and the Paulus County exclusives. Yeah, they were beautiful. And, yeah, we run through a lot of examples and stuff that me and Lenny. Like, hmm, this could be kind of cool, but a few, a few things. You had some pretty cool innovations in there, and I would love to use them. <laughs> I'm, I'm just jealous at everybody that has room for stands for each of their figures on display. I know. <laughs> Very I'll jealous. say this, though. Joe stands in general, the original Joe stand, the classified Joe stand, which is based on the real American Hero one, it's a nice stand because it fits directly under the figure. So yeah. it's like it's not like eating up the rest of the mm-hmm. shelf. So it's like it is the what is it? I think it's like a one by two. And it's like that's pretty much a figure area, you know. So yeah. um, it rocks a low profile. It does a lot. Of, I, I can't talk to it. I think I'm tired. It does <laughs> rock a low we, we, we lost an hour. This it's everybody's, yeah. everybody's still recovering. Right. We, we sprung it's ahead. A, yeah. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. It's the worst one. We uh, BMAC and I were saying today that the Monday after a spring ahead should be a holiday it so should. that we can all recover in peace and then come back on Tuesday when we're like, right, okay, this is really the time now. Yep. Yep. <laughs> all, right. all right. Friend of the pod and uh, previous guest at just Jay Hernandez. Oh. Hi, Jay Hernandez um, on Instagram asks with more Joes coming with swappable hands and fists. Are you moving to that becoming the norm? Um, depending on the character, right? So if the character needs fists, yes. If the character needs a chop hand, yes. Um, if the character has a loadout of gear that is, I don't know, sabotage gear, but they need all the sabotage gear over the hands, there will be more sabotage gear and no extra hands, right? So it's like, we have to budget what's going in the box, a lot of times, right? So it's like it's like killing your darlings. Like, well, do I design them. We we put them in the input, and then it's like we can't afford it, <laughs> so we take them out. So that's basically Joe Design One Hundred and One. We overdo it, and then we cut out. And it just it just depends on what makes the most enriching experience for the for the figure for the user, right? So it's like uh, depending on the character, I think like frag viper it's more important for frag viper to have his loadout than than fists and chop hands and stuff like that or blast effects even so it's just a matter of like it's measuring what you're going to put in there and what you can afford and what what looks like a good value as well ask for forgiveness yeah. not permission <laughs> <laughs> my engineer's a saint man <laughs> he's, he's the best Dude, let's be let's be designed to grab out of this stuff Tony, what were you going to say? You were about to say something. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, you know, Lenny uh, did an incredible job with the um, Mutton Junkyard, too, where it's a little more purposeful, right? Very meaningful. Hands in doing the call signs for the dog. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's where I really think that's super impactful, too. And, and what a gorgeous looking two pack, just on, even on the shelf. Like, I was just going to say, I'm love, blown away. Yeah. Love that two pack. Well, the two two of them. He's a very good boy. He's, a, he's, the, good boy. he's the goodest boy. He's the goodest boy. I, I gotta tell you, I um, I saw a, one in Target. It was literally just sitting. I'm like, it's just how are you not drawn to it? Like, it's just a even in the packaging. It's a it's a great looking two pack. 
Yeah. I, uh, we're, uh, currently thinking of getting a, a new dog. And, uh, I, I got to tell you, I'm like, I think I want a Rottweiler. <laughs> like, yeah, after working on that, like, they're great. <laughs> See, now, what would be great is if, you know, maybe you guys did a certain German Shepherd and his handler, just saying. Hey, man, just whenever we can do an animal, we will do an animal in the line. Animal action figures are awesome. They're just unique. You know what I mean? Like, you don't really get the opportunity in a lot of lines to do a crocodile or a Rottweiler or, or a Warthog. Right. So it's like, yeah, the opportunity arises. We will, we will do them. So that means they're all on the table and we want to get to them sooner than later. It's just a matter of uh, time and money and, and, and slots. You know what I mean? To, to this day, I still can't believe you, you were able to include such a cool accessory with, uh, with Fiona. I mean, the fact that she came with a whole other croc master figure is just, it's wild. <laughs> What yeah, one hell of an accessory. <laughs> I know, I know. That figure, what a good accessory. Very articulated <laughs> one at that, too. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, our, what were the baby's names? All I remember is El Diablo, but there was another one. El Diablo, and it was Georgie. Yeah, El Diablo is the little factor. albino one, right? The little Yeah, yeah he was, one. Uh, Tony even got really cute little, like, blushes. If you ever look at an albino crocodile, it has, like, a blush of pink on the front of their nose. And stuff like that. So that 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 thing came out. I, I love I love that. And that was like one of the first. I was like, we gotta do Croc Master to start. I remember that when we were getting into all that. Like I'm like, we gotta now, we gotta we gotta. Now, gotta you, build, now that you build the babies in the lore. I I think uh, oh. everyone would like to see what they look like when they are they're fully grown. I do too. I very much so have an idea for what that pack would be. Uh, and, and maybe but, it's maybe it's an opportunity to introduce Croc Mistress. Mm. Ooh. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> love, love. And nobody can see me shrugging. I'm shrugging as I was going to say, we were all doing it. Yes. All like, I don't it. know. <laughs> uh, you know, the, you know, you know, I got to say though, like in that exploration, we did lose the coolest accessory. The, an actual accessory it was going to be a giant slab of meat that the hook could connect to so that he could throw the meat to the crocodile. We had to cost it out because it needed its own mold, and I was already overspending. So, <laughs> who is this guy? Who is this guy, Lenny? And why does he have me molding meat? <laughs> <laughs> Got to get a good marbleization to it, you know. Guys, it's all about that distribution yeah. of fat. It's really, really yeah. important. Yeah, yeah, we're talking like eighty twenty. None of this like ninety ten crap. You know what I mean? Like, we need some good. You need some good fat levels in there. You know what I'm saying? Is is Crocmaster sourcing? Absolutely. Is he sourcing like Angus? Is he sourcing like Wagyu? What's what's he? What's he? Yeah, is it like A five? Like, well, if the- you guys have noticed, uh, Crocmaster's Croc training facility is on Cobra Island on that on that painting we did. Yeah, I don't think I don't know if we ever talked about it on a on a stream, but like we definitely put a crocodile training facility on Cobra Island because we were thinking about like what is on the island. Um, and there's a place where he's training. So if it's on Cobra Island and Cobra commander has unlimited funds, he's giving those crocodiles, Wagyu, uh, cows, man, those things are, uh, they're marbleized, you know, but not too much though. You gotta be careful. You don't want to, you don't want the, you don't want to get, you know, you gotta like, you gotta keep them, you gotta keep them a little lean, a little crazy. Yeah. You know? So you gotta, that's what <laughs> It's, That's it's it's a rich it's a rich steak. You can't eat it all. Uh, that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mindbender's got the the GMOs. He's he's putting them in. He's he's yeah, yeah, yeah. Home. Those crocodiles are sauced up. <laughs> <laughs> so our our final question from Q and A comes from at Wreckship underscore eighty five. Uh, how do you decide which figures fit into a wave, a retro, or a retro wave? Is it driven purely by story? Or do you have some sort of character ranking system? Combination. Um, we want it to be all driven by story, but a lot of times it can be driven by finances, who you can get to and what you could afford to make properly, um, who can get an update properly, who doesn't need an update. Um, ultimately, if I could, I would do it all story-based, but a lot of it is story-based, but then... Like, did you dream? We're going to doing this. And then you're like, ooh, ooh that figure. I'm not going to be able to have enough to make that figure look awesome. So then we have to go another direction that I could make that figure look awesome. Right? So it's like, uh, again, it's that, like, moving the gauges around. 
Um, that's kind of like the, the, the realist answer. Um, but I think a lot of it is it, if we could, it would be more story driven. Um, but I don't know if I'm butchering this answer, Emily no, and right. Tony, but it's, uh, beautiful. <laughs> it's a beautiful statement of it's reality. A beautiful statement of reality. <laughs> I think that, and it is, you know, we, we are grounded in reality, but I mean, we do have character ranking documents and we, mm-hmm. one of the things that we also take into account is, you know, what do we hear fans really saying that they want next? Who do we hear the most that, you know, is missing from your collections and is, who is the next iconic character that you need to complete your shelf? Yeah. Those top 10 lists that a lot of fans do just like scrolling through Instagram and you're seeing people's like random list. Like you'll see a lot of correlations. So those lists are super helpful because we want to make you guys stuff that you're like interested into. Yeah. So like seeing those lists, super helpful. Finishing, well, just finishing teams. Um, yep. Definitely priority knowing that we've started something and we want to finish it as well. Um, that doesn't go unnoticed. It's just, the right time and the right place to be able to put them. Um, can't do them all at once, unfortunately, uh, cause there's so many other things that, uh, people want as well. So, you know, the dreadnoughts are getting filled out pretty nice though. I gotta say. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, there's a and whole lot of dreadnoughts. There's a lot of dreadnoughts. If I could, I want to make some new dreadnoughts eventually. I want to get, I want to get silly with it. Get some grape um, soda in there. Yeah. We got to get grape soda. You know, it's funny. Um, you got quick pick, quick kick his, uh, ice cream bar. So I did. I did, but it's it's so fun. You guys only knew. Sometimes you do something, you sculpt something, and then you can't keep the thing. You guys only knew. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you brought up lists because um, this is an opportunity for us to re- kind of reveal something to our audience and, and also to you guys because we haven't discussed it Ooh. with you yet. But um, right now we're we're running currently as this show is airing is we'll be in March and we're running our March first ever March Madness for Marvel Legends. So we're running mm-hmm. March. Marvel Legends, March Madness. Um, well, we're going to do, we've had such a, a great response. Uh, we're going to do the same thing in June for G.I. Joe. So we're going to do a yeah. Yo Joe June uh, 64 Fun. character tournament where we'll let everybody everybody vote. Um, and uh, and we'll, we'll have a, a number one pick coming, coming your way. I already so. know who's going to win. Oh, it's absolutely going to be Ice Cream Soldier. What did you think? It would be? <laughs> hey, guys, as if Ice Cream Soldier. I thought, I thought you were going to say cesspool because I want cesspool to win. Yeah, cesspool is awesome. I thought you, you know, were going to vote for Soldier to win, so I'm going to vote for Ice Cream Soldier in every round against whoever he's up against. I'll have to. I'll have to make come sure in a bunch of different wants. flavors. Yeah. Do a Neapolitan pack, <gasps> so it comes in yes. strawberry, chocolate, and vanilla. Oh, or do a Spumoni pack. So you do a chocolate pistachio and what is it? Cherry. Oh, do that'd be great. Pistachio. Pistachio. Yeah. Mm. The sophisticated ice cream. Honestly, the pistachio <laughs> is the sophisticated ice cream. Honestly, I, ate, I will be quietly pulling for Road Pig to, to, oh, win, the, to win the, uh, to win we, the, we, uh, soft announced Road Pig. Did we? I don't think, you, I mean, I think you just did. <laughs> did I just do that on it? <laughs> Yeah, we did. He said no pig. No, do you just see Eric's face? You haven't announced this yet. See how excited this man is? You just made his night. I just did? Wow, we got just two in about it. We got two in one episode. No way. All right. All right. You can cut that one out, but Road Pig, yes, and he looks awesome. No, he doesn't have to cut it out. Just let him keep it in. It's fine. You sure? Yeah, what do we care? <laughs> yeah, he's Give awesome. Give him what he wants. Don't make him pretend like it didn't happen. <laughs> And here's the render reveal. <laughs> All right. And then here's another one. And here's the Haslab. Blind Panther 26. Oh, man. I'm a silly one. Blow torch Let's say again. Silly like that. That's all the information I'm given. All right. Well, what a way to end the Q&A segment. <laughs> um, Road Pig. All right. Can't guess. I guess we don't have to put him on the list, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> no. Congratulations. Well, uh, Oops. you guys Road have... Pig, you're the winner. <laughs> you already won. We're, we're, all, we're all winners here. We're all winners. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, you you survived. I guess we'll do air quotes. You survived the Q&A <laughs> segment with minim- only minimal I damage. Afraid. Only minimal damage. Um, <laughs> so since you guys have all been guests on the show before, before we let you go, you know we have our our final question that we ask all of our guests. Um, we have an alternate question for you. Dave, 
would you like to fulfill your role as this podcast's James Lipton and ask our final question? Why, yes, I would. (laughs) Our final question. Since you've all been on the show multiple times and have all been asked our standard final question, we present you with this alternate question. If you were a G.I. Joe or Cobra, what would be your ideal assignment? Clarifying question. Uh, Are we talking realism or are we talking like ideal? I I think ideal. Ideal. Yeah. Ideal is the way to go. I have an answer, unless, Tony, you're looking like you might have an answer, too. You want to go first? Oh, I'll, I'll start, yeah. <laughs> sure. Oh, no. Uh, j- <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so, so first, uh, you have to identify Cobra or G.I. Joe. No, we're going Cobra. Okay. I, I think I may have said this before, but uh, I'm sticking with it. And Emily uh, so delightfully actually even put it on one of my G.I. Joe uh, hoodies for me. But uh, Cobra Paint Viper would be pretty sweet where I get to go in and paint up all the his tanks. And someone's going to do all those uh, Python mm. Patrol uh, redecos and uh, do all that. So hopefully I get to be the lead master painter uh, of the, of the uh, you know, vehicle force. Master Paint Viper. What a – Yeah. That's awesome. That's beautiful. I love it. So 2027 for that one? Mm-hmm. Like- <laughs> yeah. I'm holding out for my other character, who I'm not going to say on the air. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were going to do it, man. I'm like, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> well, well, that's going to be a reveal on the on the next AIC uh, podcast. I'm waiting for that to be a real reveal. Yeah, he's really going to change the game. That's for sure. That character's going to change the game. Oh, my God. I can't wait. <laughs> who's, who's next? We can never tell the people. <laughs> before, before he slips and says it, who's next? Who wants to go next? Emily, you go. So if I was going for ideal skill set, it would be Cobra, and I would definitely be a sneaky assassin, like I play in Assassin's Creed, and I would just, we'd be in a world of G.I. Joe where it's not the Sunbow world where nobody dies. I would just be really, really good at mercilessly assassinating people. In a uh, more realistic world, probably also for Cobra, but I would be in charge of like scheduling and doing spreadsheeting that involved color coding and like organizing people's schedules. Like I would, or- I would organize like these are all of like the the vipers that are on shift right now, and they need to figure out when they get to go on lunch and when <laughs> are they working swing shift? Are they working night shift? Great question. Why don't you go ask the uh, what would that be the the schedule something? I don't know the logistics viper for that schedule logistics viper. viper. And- yeah, I'd be the schedule viper. <laughs> yeah. I kind of love that. <laughs> these these are all legit figures that no one knew they needed yeah. until like today. I need I need like but like it's like they still have to wear the the helmet, but they have like a business yeah. suit on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but hundred percent. Interesting. But it comes with like a physical spreadsheet as well as a laptop. Yes, Ooh. love it. It's very key. You got to be able to write on it. Um, as a tangent, to give Lenny more time. Uh. When I was, when I got my G.I. Joe job, one of the questions that I was actually asked was, if you were an action figure, what are two accessories that you would come with? A spreadsheet and coffee? Fascinatingly, I don't drink coffee. Oh. I know, right? I'm just like this without any caffeine. (laughs) I don't want to see that with a coffee. That would be, that's just... (laughs) We all sometimes we all drink energy drinks before fan streams, but we have to make sure that all three of us do it so that all of our energy is notched up obnoxiously and we match each other. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Equally obnoxious. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So what were the what were the two accessories? Oh God, that was a long time ago. I think I think at one point it was definitely I would come with highlighters so that I can color code everything that I'm doing and make sure that it's nicely organized. And I may have said like a cat or something, you know, equally charming, um, something something clever and non work related. Um, she says with her dog literally like asleep over her shoulder during this interview. I, I love it. He is. Love he it. is out. Yeah. Out. It's, it's past our bedtime, so she's letting me know that it's really like she'd really like me to speed this up so we can go to bed. <laughs> uh. I think I'm going to jump in because she looks like she's pretty tired. Uh, I, I guess I don't. It's funny I don't think about this all the time of who I would be. 
Uh, I think maybe I'd want to be like a demolition dude. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like not saboteur, not not firefly, but I want to be like a demolition dude with like, like a like a like like a sledgehammer. You know what I mean? Like sledgehammers and stuff like that. Just bringing the bringing in the heavy. You know what I mean? Like this, like wreck and shop somehow. All all brawn, no brains. This be funny character. Was this I, a Joe or a cobra? And that's that's where I'm going. I think. Oh, all right. Yeah. I think we need that on Joe. Yeah. Somebody mm-hmm. just kind of goes in mm-hmm. reckless abandon, and it's just like Leroy Jenkins, and it's just like mm-hmm. things things are gonna things are gonna break. You know what I mean? I think that'd be fun. Uh, and then from a design standpoint, too, uh, I think it kind of be cool to be like uh, just kind of going in there and uh, just just making a mess and seeing what comes out of it. You know what I mean? Like it's late, so I'm having trouble formulating thoughts. But, um, you know, like go in and be a little more dreamy yeah. with it. Right. So it's just like break it down and see the pieces and make something new out of it kind of thing. So. You could be like codename Meat Hooks. Dude, that's meat hooks? Yeah. That's incredible. Just like with like massive like hands and sledgehammers and just, you know, you could, that would be. Your, like, that would be like Hulk hands. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like meat hooks. It's like, it's like how they portrayed Bazooka in the cartoon, but like actually wrecking stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like imagine like pneumatic like Hulk hands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he's old school. He uses a sledgehammer straight up. Like it's all sweat of the brow. Love it. Um, wait, but Eric and Dave, what would you be? Oh, what would your jobs be? <clears throat> so I would definitely be a Joe. Um, I mean, listen, like GI Joe, like they need marketing support. Like they need the guy. <laughs> they need the guy that's writing, like <laughs> writing the copy. They need like the guy who's writing like the internal documents. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like they need they need that guy. They need the technical writer. They need the copywriter. Um, they need the voice of the brand. So I, I I would have to go. I would have to lean on my professional skill set outside of doing this wonderful podcast and say that I would be uh, I would be like the marketing officer at at uh, at GI Joe. Beautiful. Um, I guess I'd be like, it would make more sense for for it to be a Cobra job. But I'd be like the guy who like cuts promos on people. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> like I'm just gonna I I, I I the all talk like guy you know, and then everyone else just yeah you you can take care of that now. <laughs> you can take care of that mess I made. Um, you could be Cobra like Commander WWE style, right. like WWE yeah. style, like cutting promos on fools, like just like talking smack. Yeah, pretty much. I love that. <laughs> what a great job. <laughs> and you're your cobra. It's like the opposite of Eric's. Like I'm the evil Eric. <laughs> <laughs> and your your code name could be like Motormouth or Smack like talk. Mouthpiece yeah. or something like that. Yeah, Mouthpiece would be good. Right. Mouthpiece is really good. Great. That's great. <laughs> so uh this this six figure wave or five figure <laughs> wave will be <laughs> Speaking Wait, of five figures, six figures so we can put in an ice cream soldier. Definitely. There you yeah, go. Sure. Done. Six we figures. should make a G.I. Joe named Six Figures and he's got all the money. Oh. Well, Destro has got all the money. But like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. somebody named like like kind of like uh like Headman, you know what I mean? Like he's got skin in the game. Yeah. The yeah, financier. The yeah. finance financial backer. Like tell me that's the thing with G.I. Joe. It's hard for me to come up with it because it's like they've got it all covered, man. Tell me mm-hmm. Zamar. They got financiers, they got it all. G.I. Joe's got but it all. But there's so many like potential jobs in there for and like anything works. Yep. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Well, with that, we've we've done our final question. We've done our Q and A, guys. Before we let you go, uh, where can we get the latest and greatest news about uh, GI Joe Classified? Tell our listeners uh, where they can uh, find you guys and find the GI Joe Classified stuff on the interwebs. Uh, on the interwebs for official things, you can find G.I. Joe updates on the at Hasbro Pulse channels across Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, I don't know, threads if we're still active on that. Um, and then personally, I am at more phenomenally Emily on Instagram. Boys. And I am at Weather Dominator on Instagram. 
But it's and, gonna I, uh, oh. <laughs> and I'm the the great Tonino on Instagram. And and we will Instagram make sure. Here. And, well, that's uh, that's the it's the place to be. It's it's the place. Yeah, to be. it's 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 the fun one. Um, I, I will make sure that for the put, most part that we put links to all of those uh, accounts uh, in the show notes. That way, you don't have to try to figure out how to spell. Uh, more phenomenal, more phenomenally, Emily. Um, I'll make sure that we have clickable, tappable links, so that way everybody can can follow you guys, and if they're not already, and and uh, and stay up to date on the uh, the latest uh, GI Joe news. Guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, this was this was so much fun. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for coming back. But uh, I feel like is there any other way to go out? Yo, Thank you, dear listener, for hanging out with us today. Subscribe, rate, and review us wherever you listen, and then tell your friends to do it. Thanks also to Joe Azari, the golden voice behind our intro. Our music is Game Boy Horror by the Zombie Dandies. Find more about them both on our show notes. Follow us on social media at AIC underscore podcast on Instagram and Twitter. Stop by and say hi. Show us your toy hauls and share your toy stories. Maybe we'll talk about it in a future episode. Don't try this at home. Voidware prohibited and some assembly required. Each sold separately, not a flying toy. Consult a physician if your toy run exceeds more than four hours. This has been a non-productive media presentation. Executive producer, Frank Hablaoui. This program and many others like it on the non-productive network is distributed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. Please share it, but ask before trying to change it or sell it. For more information, visit non-productive.com. 